talk about joint movements and we've got an image obviously on the screen already that gets a lot of the work done for us but let's just take a moment and go over it sort of step by step here folks shall we so first things first we are basically saying that we are interested today in two types of synovial joint or two types of freely movable joint and do consider using the phrase synovial joints here as well because that's exactly what they are now it is worth knowing that there are a whole bunch of other types of synovial joints um, but we're going to focus on hinge and ball and socket okay so there we go these are free and it's also worth knowing as well there's other joints other than synovial we have for example um, partially movable joints or semi-movable joints and we also have fixed or immovable joints but that's you know perhaps for another day now i want to come to the left as you look at this and i want to focus on the hinge joint you will not be surprised to know that the knee and the elbow and the ankle oh well let me rephrase that you will not be surprised to know that the knee and the ankle uh, the elbow are hinge joints most people are aware of that or if you're, you weren't you are now this one will be less kind of certain in people so i'll do a sort of a dotted tick there Pe people sort of question this one about the ankle being hinge it's a hinge joint now the point i want to make first of all is that if i take the knee the elbow and the ankle they all move through a single plane now if you're not sure what planes are we're going to come to that later in the course or maybe you've studied that already i don't know but all three of these move through the sagittal plane, which basically means that they can do flexion and extension or a format of flexion and extension. So let's put that in. The knee can do flexion and extension. So just to be clear, flexion is when the elbow, uh, sorry, when the knee um, bends, extension is when it straightens. Guess what? The elbow can do flexion and extension. The elbow can flex when it bends and it can straighten for extension now you're probably expecting me right james going to write down flexion extension but this is where it gets a little bit different in the ankle we have got something called plantar flexion which by the way is two words not one plantar flexion and we have something called dorsi flexion you'd be thinking right okay well both of those are forms of flexion which they are but plantar flexion is when a person points their toes downwards think about a ballerina sort of gaining gathering tension in the legs to maybe to be on point um when they're doing those sorts of moves think about a gymnast doing uh, the same thing for the same reason think about the way your toes point downwards as you go to jump to i don't know get a, um, a rebound when you're uh, playing basketball say dorsi flexion is when your toes sort of curl more up towards your shin okay that's dorsi flexion and we need to understand the distinctions between those two you might be thinking about when does dorsi flexion happen well there's a couple of examples some people argue that dorsi flexion happens in the latter stages of striking a football or rugby ball with the foot for example when the foot when the leg is in front of you so sort of the toes tend to come further up it doesn't it depends on the technique actually but the one i like is when we land from a jump Okay, so you might imagine you've just done a, a long jump, say, and you land with two feet, albeit in the sand. Your sort of shins and your toes will kind of go towards each other. They won't meet because that would be d damaging, but they can do that. Now, your shoulder and your hip, interestingly, can also do flexion and flexion. But notice these are not hinge joints, they're ball and socket. They can also do extension and extension. Now, we're going to go on to other movements in a second, but these ones I really want to stress. Flexion at a ball and socket joint is when a person moves uh, their limb in front of the body. So if I do a sideways on stick man here, look, very poor stick man. Here's our sideways on stick man. They're facing in that direction. This leg here is in flexion. Whereas this, let me do it in a different color, this leg is in extension okay so the leg goes and that's at the hip notice at the hip so the leg goes behind the body it's extension the leg goes in front of the body it's flexion so think about let's say a kick to extend you're preparing to kick to flex is sort of the follow-through of the kick right so that's really important if i had a stick man and we were working with the arms it would work the same way this would be flexion and this would be extension okay I don't know why his arms are so long and this would be extension so that's a really nice way for you to be thinking about this however what's also true to say is that the shoulder and the hip can do other things they're also capable of doing abduction let me put it they want to be green actually because we've used that green already we want to go yellow we're gonna go abduction and they can perform but this is both joints by the way and they can perform ad adduction 
Now again, these words sound very similar to one another, don't they? And it's a little bit irritating, but they're also very, very simple concepts. So let me draw you uh, a little person again. This time, we're gonna look at our stick person sort of front on here, okay? So here's our little stick person. There they are. Abduction occurs when this arm, say at the shoulder, rotates to there, and now their arm is in that position. Or this hip, this hip here, it rotates this way, and this leg is now in this position. That is abduction, it is movement away from the midline. Here's the midline of that body. Movement away from that midline is abduction. Now, if those, if that comes back in, if this comes back in, that is movement towards the midline. It's adduction. And I didn't put my N on that word earlier, so uh -huh. adduction may well be what adduction is in, in Spanish or Italian, I'm not, I'm not sure. So we've got those. Now to finish this off, I want to focus specifically, although it does relate to the hip as well, and I want to talk about circumduction. So specifically on the shoulder. If the shoulder, let's say that we're, let's say that we go back to our stick man again, sideways on, here's our stick person. Let's say the shoulder starts here, okay, in a sort of flex position, and it comes all the way back around and comes to here, that is circumduction. Now, a great example of that is overarm bowling in cricket, okay? And we can actually say that circumduction is the combination of flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction in that movement. And at any one point, the, the, the shoulder will either be flexed, extended, abducted, or adducted, okay? So it's quite nice to think about it in that way. And finally, folks, the, um, the shoulder, and this is the same for the hip joint, actually, it can also undertake what's called rotation, okay, rotation. And rotation is kind of a tricky one. Rotation occurs when uh, a ball and socket joint turns in its own socket, okay? So this is where we're gonna take bowling, and now we're gonna talk about spin bowling in cricket. So think about this, the, the bowling arm twisting in its own socket as it circumducts. This is an example of rotation. So we've got our knee, elbow, and ankle that move along the sagittal plane. Of course, the flexion extension, they're also along the sagittal plane. If you don't know what planes are at this point, guys, don't worry, we're gonna come to that. But we've actually got abduction and adduction there along the frontal plane. Now it happens to be the case that our rotation is actually across the is along the third plane, which is uh, the transverse plane. But I'll leave that for another day. Thanks.